Hi everyone. How's it going? I am here for a, another live stream. As you know, I typically upload a new video every Tuesday, but this week I'm doing two live streams instead because last week I was teaching like I do every summer with the illustration Masters of Fine Arts program at the Hartford Art School at the University of Hartford. And it's a low residency program, so that means that it meets um, just meets on campus for two weeks every summer, and then in the fall and the spring, they meet in different cities. But during the summer, they have two weeks of classes, one class the first week and one class the second week. In that first week, I teach the third year students, the ones that are about to graduate, um, about adding motion to their illustration work. So we do that Monday through Friday, all day, every day. So as you can imagine, it's a chaotic week and um, I didn't have time to make a new video. So I thought instead I would do a live stream. These live streams where I've been lettering commenters' names have been pretty popular and they've been a lot of fun to do. So I thought this would be the perfect excuse to do another one. Looks like we've got lots of people in the chat already, which is pretty great. Um, we've got regulars like Diana Lisa, nice to see you. Good morning, Jeffrey Wright, nice to see you again. Um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, let me know where you are tuning in from because that is always cool to see. Uh, Maze 10, Bujdidi Eddy, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Trevor McDougall. You've been watching lots of my videos. Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that you've been helpful. So next week, I will be back on schedule, posting new videos on Tuesday, and also doing my regular live stream on Fridays, which um, I, mean, I have a little graphic to put up here. Let me uh, turn that on. So every Friday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, I do a live stream here on YouTube, obviously. So definitely tune into that. I'm trying to bring in my Fresco Friday tips into that video. The plan is that I will then pull them from the live stream and then make them into a separate video. So that hasn't happened yet, but that, that's the goal. <laughs> so um, that way I can still do the Fresco Friday things, but also make it a live stream. And then I'll also be doing like illustration Q and A's while I'm live drawing and doing different things. Um, I may have like a structure for these in the future, but I'm still trying to figure out what works. So definitely let me know the kind of things that you would like to see in those live streams. Um, they're a lot of fun to do and definitely going to keep doing that. Um, what else? One other thing to say is that I have an exciting collaboration coming up with um, my friend Tom Frost, who is a amazing illustrator. We're going to um, sort of guest host each other's channel. So he has a uh, podcast called uh, Thinking About Design, I, about illustration, and it's an amazing podcast. He also has a YouTube channel and he is um, one of the Skillshare top teachers. He's just an incredible illustrator and an awesome guy. So. I'm going to be hosting one of his Draw With Me events that he does for his um, supporters of his Patreon, but the one that I do will be open to the public to some degree, so stay tuned for that. It will be on, actually, there's a date for it. Let me um, just double check so I don't say the wrong day. So the 28th, so next Friday, um, I will be host, guest hosting his Draw With Me challenge. And I'm planning on doing an exercise drawing like monsters and creatures out of like scribbles and doodles. So it should be a lot of fun. So come hang out, go check out his, his page for more information about that and stay tuned on my, on my channel. I'll post in the community section. You can also get more information on my, uh, uh, Wrong graphic. We're pulling graphic, graphics everywhere. One of these days, I'm gonna be better at using these overlays live, but I gotta say, pulling in graphics and 
talking and staying on track, it's a lot, especially first thing in the morning. So definitely stay tuned for that stuff. I also would love to just say a special thank you to my uh, channel members. You can find out more about becoming a channel member if you're interested by looking at the join button at the bottom. But all of my super supporter and above members get their name lettered like this and it's included in all the videos that I make while they are channel members. Um, so that's another way to get your name drawn if it doesn't get drawn in this uh, live stream. So thank you to all of them. Okay, so those are the things that I wanted to cover. So the way that I do these draw your name things is I usually just start at the top um, and work my way down. I get tons of messages from people wanting me to draw their name and, you know, asking if I'll do it afterwards. And, you know, um, I try to do it first come, first serve. And I would love to just letter all the names in the world, but obviously I can't do that, especially because, you know, I sort of do it for a living sometimes. Um, I do illustration, but sometimes it's lettering. Anyway, um, so it's going to be first come, first serve, but if you absolutely are just really trying to get your name drawn and you are not in the top of the comments, there is the option to do a, a super chat to bump up ahead of the line. Um, I think to actually cut ahead of people, it would have to be like a, a $10 super chat to do that. No pressure on doing that. I'm just saying if you really want your name drawn and you're not at the top of the list, that is another option. So I am just going to switch over to my iPad screen and get started. Um, let me just see what's going on in the comments, see if I missed anything. Jimmy D Rock, another familiar face and a channel member. You may have seen his name if you looked closely at the lettering treatments. Um, actually, I drew his name in one of these live challenges, so it wasn't in the other one. I just remember drawing his, drawing Jimmy's name. Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, Find Phoenix, thanks for saying you love my video. Um, hey, Jason, another person whose name I have drawn in one of these live streams. Daddyosaurus, all right. Quinn McKay, nice to see you. Um, you, <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, Quinn. I remember you were in a previous live stream and you messaged a whole bunch and you were just enthusiastic and I support that. Um, you are pretty close to the top, so there is a chance that your name might get drawn today. So um, we'll see how things go. Uh, Trevor, thanks, that, thanks for watching my videos. Glad you've been enjoying them. Uh, Marcelo, uh, I, you know, I would love to draw your name as long as I, I get to it. Um, we'll see how things go. I know I'm going to get into it really soon. Just want to check in with all these comments. Uh, Ed from Fresno, thanks for joining in. Thomas Pepper, thanks for joining in as well. Uh, Jose and Rezapur from Iran, awesome. Nice to see you here. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Uh, Andre, yes, Ecamm is tricky, but it seems like it's a little less tricky than some of the other ones I tried. Works pretty well for me. Uh, Gavin, hello. I think you may be my nephew, Gavin. It's hard to sell, tell because it's just a G right there, but if it is, uh, thanks for watching. Um, all right, so I am going to go back up to the top, switch over to my iPad screen. Hopefully this just works seamlessly. Nice. No technical issues so far. It looks like the volume is good, so things are starting to get a little bit more smooth with these live streams. Hopefully my neighbors don't start mowing their lawn. So I am going to go to the top, and uh, the first comment was from Diana Lisa, but I've already drawn your name, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, Gavin is the second one to comment, so I'm going to draw uh, Gavin on this live stream. Debatable if it's cheating because it might be my nephew, but he's he's here. He commented first. Uh, I'm gonna draw Gavin's name. So let's. Um, I got my 
pencil brush selected and I'm just gonna go right in here. Oh, I forgot my glove again. I even thought about it, but okay, no big deal. We're gonna work without it. So it's hard for me to even consider doing anything besides like a scripty G like this, uh, cause it's a lot of fun to do that. So maybe we can do something with like a, like a lightning bolt in the tail that this is super rough and at this point I'm sort of just like thinking <laughs> and like not really drawing I'm just like trying to make a plan of attack and I don't really think about how crude and rough it is because uh, it's just for me but I guess when I'm live streaming I'm like oh I should do this a little bit better but I can sort of see through the scribble and have it like make sense to me so I think we can probably work from this. So what I'll do now, as usual, I will bring down the opacity and I'm going to select my current favorite inking brush, which is the Retro Supply Co. Classic Inker from their liner set. If you are interested in any of the Retro Supply Co. brushes, please use the link below in the description because uh, if you order them with my link, I get a little commission which helps to support the channel. So I'm going to make sure my smoothing is turned all the way up so that I can uh, draw clean lines uh, this early in the morning after I've had too much coffee. Just adjust the brush size a little bit. So because I'm doing like a lightning bolt situation, I think I'm going to start with that and then get that situated and then I can work the lettering around it because I can be flexible with that but the lightning needs to like have a specific shape so I'm going to do that hope everyone had a good weekend oh I so I mentioned that I'm going to be guest hosting Tom Froze is um, draw with me, but he is also going to come on my live stream. I don't know if it's going to be the same Friday. It might be, but I will let you guys know. But he's going to come on and do some live drawing little exercise thing on, on my Friday live stream. So it'll be a fun way to switch things up. And then we'll also both do like a you know answer illustration questions and stuff like that so it'll be a good time Tom is an illustrator based out of um, out of Canada so he will be up extra early to come on to my live stream so I appreciate his enthusiasm for getting up that early or I don't know if he's enthusiastic, but he's willing to do it, <laughs> is what it comes down to. Okay, so I'm just trying to like follow the lines of the, the lightning bolt to try to make this flow together. Maybe we could do a little, I don't know. Maybe we can get fancy with the dot. I'll give it a shot in a second. Just notice that rhymed. Okay, let's turn off the sketch. And then maybe we could do a quick little extra lightning bolt up here for the dot on the eye. Okay, that's, I guess that's a decent way to start the morning. I'll move that over here and let's go back to the list and uh, see how things are going. I'm gonna switch back to my pencil because obviously I can't sketch in my final linking brush. So next would be, uh, 
let's see. Che Kuang Ho, I assume I'm pronouncing that wrong, so I'm sorry if I am. Um, I'm going to write this down just normally first so that I don't spell it wrong. Che Kuang Ho. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to move the chat back down to the bottom so I can see where I am. Thanks so much for the super chat, Lady Icarus. Um, I, did I draw your name last time? Are you hoping that I draw your name again? Was that what the super chat was for? Or is it just a uh, nice super chat? If you want me to draw your name again, remind me if it would be different. I think I drew space Icarus drawn a lot of these it's hard to remember let me know in the comments um trevor you said do you find your adhd helps or hinders your ability to concentrate on your art um i think the art is the easiest thing for me to focus on the hardest things for me to focus on with my adhd is like uh, is like um else responding to things um that kind of thing I'm currently putting together a talk for the um, that MFA program that I teach at. I, I'm doing a, a lecture on Friday about my work, and I, that is something that my ADHD is making me super struggle with because I'm just like kind of all over the place. Like I'm trying to like sort of build a theme around what I'm going to talk about. And it's, I just keep like going down tangents and get distracted and like spending time, like making graphics. Like I think I'm being, I, I do this like fake productive thing where I'll spend a bunch of time doing something that's not really helping the cause, like making a graphic for a slide. And that sounds helpful, but I'm like making like an animated thing that is just going to be a slide that's up for like a second, you know, and it's, uh, that's not a good use of, of my time because it is, uh, <laughs> it's taking too much time is what it comes down to. Okay. Let's see. I just went all in here. So this is when your lettering is not helpful to just go in and like design and when you have like multiple words to just focus on one of them like this before you've thought about the other letter the other words because sure this this looks like it could be okay but like i don't know how the other letters are going to work with this so it's better to think about the whole shape when you're doing a logo or a name and i was distracted talking about something else and just drawing without thinking and now I think I have to start over because I don't think this is going to flow together that well. So I'm going to leave it up, start a new layer, and then kind of maybe reference it. I do think we can maybe do some sort of connection thing like this to the K. So maybe we could do like an almost script thing. Oh, look at that. Maybe we can do this. Oh, and that would fit that negative space right there. Maybe we could bring this back up like that. Ooh, okay. I think this is going to work. <laughs> See, this is what I mean by thinking about the whole shape as opposed to just one word. Because, like, I wouldn't have come up with something that works together this well if I just started drawing the first word on its own. So that's a, I don't know, a lettering tip for you all. <laughs> uh, let me just double check the spelling before I get rid of the other stuff. So C-H-E-A, yes, Quang Ho. Okay, cool. I'm gonna delete that stuff, delete that, and then make this 
bigger. And now do a tighter version. Um, yes, Lady Icarus, thanks for clarifying. I would be happy to draw either of those. Um, let me know which one you prefer. You can think about it while I'm drawing this, because I think either either would be fine. Okay, let me switch to the Retro Supply Co. Classic Inker, and I'm gonna try to do these like flowy lines that connect the letters first and then build the rest around that because that's sort of like the thing that ties it all together. I don't know how I wanna end the bottom of this K. I think I might have to think about that after the fact. And also this H. So a, one of my favorite uh, fresco tips is when you are drawing with a brush, instead of switching to eraser, if you just double tap your modifier button, you can use your existing brush as an eraser. And this is particularly helpful when you're using a brush that has a little bit of texture like this one, because then you can use that same texture and it doesn't look like a weird erasing, for example. If I didn't use that and I just used the eraser and I came in here, you know, I've got this like tight edge. Obviously you can like find some different erasers, but nothing's gonna be exactly the same as the brush that you were drawing with. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, uh, uh, uh. just trying to, follow along with the chats. I don't know why I'm making singing noises. Um, Daddy Source, he said, how mad would you be if I borrowed the live idea for my art followers? Uh, I did not invent a drawing live stream. So I would not be mad at all. I think you should go for it. I think it's a fun way to kind of connect with your audience. And I don't know. I think you should, I think you should do it. Uh, Monster Art Studio, you said you love watching my videos while you make art dolls. Oh, that's rad. Uh, you spend most of your day alone like a crazy toy maker. Well, you know, I do too, so I get that. I'm just in my little studio, working away, so I get that. So when you're doing script, you wanna make sure that the areas where there would be a downstroke are thick, and then it's thin on the upstroke, because that makes it easier to read because it's like the traditional way letters are, would be drawn, like script letters would be drawn with like a brush pen. So like on the way up, you'd be pulling, and on the brush, and on the way down, you'd be pushing, and that would just be the way the brush would work, and that's just how script has developed from, you know, many, many hundreds and hundreds of years, I guess. So that is uh, just another tip. So it can be a little bit confusing as you're doing it. I try to have to like go in my head and like think about, or I used to, now I sort of just know. But early on I would like sometimes like ghost draw it on the side or like think about how it would be written. Like an L, I'm going up and then down, pushing harder. So that's, um, you know, uh, another, another pro tip.
I still need to figure out like a background music situation because these live streams where I'm just drawing can be a little bit quiet when I'm not talking. I think we got a little too big on that A because I didn't tighten up my sketch too much. <clears throat> Uh, great Southern Creative, you said pretend usefulness is a real struggle. Um, but once you've started, you can't stop until it's, that is so real. Yeah, uh, 100%. Um, a, a prime example of that would be the animation that I put on when I went, when I turned on the live stream. I'll just pop it up real quick as a reference. Like this little title card. Like I, I spent a considerable amount of time doing this because there's so many different things animated and like this is not useful. I don't need this. I could just put my name up. Why did I do that? If I wanted to show some animated work, I could just show some work that I've actually done. But I guess this is a fun thing to have. But it's not what I needed to do to get that, uh, that talk done, especially since I'm playing catch up like crazy because I lost like a full week of you know, actual work and, you know, getting stuff ready for videos and client work. So, uh, not, not useful. <laughs> and that's not like the only thing I did for that talk that was a waste of time. Uh, there, there's other things. So it's a struggle, very much a struggle. Thanks for the super chat, Gavin. That was nice of you. Ed, you said, I love your videos. Chris, I'm new to Fresco, but I've used Illustrator for years. Do you know if Fresco has Bezier curves or control points to adjust vector line width? So, uh, it, <clears throat> excuse me. Fresco doesn't have those features, but what you can do is when you're working in vector, um, and you do your drawing with the vector brushes and then you want to like fine tune it or adjust things, you can go up to the top and then open a copy in Illustrator and you can do that either on, in Illustrator for the iPad or Illustrator on your desktop. Um, the only issue is you can't bring it back in to Fresco at the moment, but I imagine that might be something that they're going to address uh, because it would be a useful feature. I understand why they don't have the ability to um, adjust, like to have Bezier curves in Fresco because they're trying to stream, like keep it from getting, you know, a little too bloated and just have it be more about like the drawing experience and not that kind of drawing. And I appreciate that too some degree because one of the reasons I like drawing in fresco so much, um, there's a lot of them, but one of them being that it's just so much more streamlined than like drawing in Photoshop or something like that, which is what I used to do before the iPad. I need to take a sip of water because my voice is going already. Okay, so let's delete the sketch. Uh, cool, I like that. I'm pretty happy with that. Hope you like it too. <clears throat> uh, thanks so much for the super chat, Thomas Pepper. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you said, I'm responsible for your new iPad and Fresco. Uh, well, um, I hope you have fun with them. I think you will enjoy them. Okay, I'm going to move this over to the finished pile. 
I'll turn that one off. Actually, I'll leave that up on the screen for a second while I find the next one. Um, so, actually, let me go ahead and make sure that I favorite these super chats so that I don't forget to draw them. Okay, so the next on the list is <clears throat> uh, Eris King. So I'm going to do the first step, which is switch to my pencil and just write it out so I don't forget things. And then Thomas Pepper will be next. So, okay, let me turn off that one. Let me move this over. Look at my handwriting. <laughs> That's terrible. All right, let's figure out what we can do for this one. Harris. It just makes me want to do something fancy because of the king last name, but I feel like I need to do something different because... It's like, um, they just did strip before. So I'm gonna do something playful like this. I wonder if there's, I can't resist doing like curvy uh, leg things on letters like K and R. I wonder if we can, I just like to make fun connections like this. Maybe we can do something like this. All right, the one R, two S's, and then King. Okay, so we can delete that. Hi, Paola. <laughs> um, okay, I am going to make this a little bit bigger and then try to figure out what I'm doing with these letters. So I think I like this sort of R, N, combo, maybe? I don't know. Actually, now that I'm trying to tighten it up a little bit, it feels weird. Let's, um... Sometimes you think things are going to be good when you're doing the rough sketch and then you like go to tighten it up and you're like, oh, that looked cool as a sketch, but now it's not delivering how I wanted to. Sometimes I just want to like try to connect everything, which is kind of ridiculous. Okay, connect there. So I'm just like trying to tighten things up as I go and like streamline it and see actually how the letters connect and relate to one another before I do like the tighter version. So I think I wanna do like overlapping letters for this one. Let's see, can't tell if that is gonna to be too much, but maybe not. I was like, oh, do I wanna connect those? But that might be crazy. I think that's, that's too much. Oh, but like, what about those? That might be too hard to read. <laughs> 
I'm having full on conversation with myself over here. I think we're going to move in and start working on this. I'm going to use vector brushes for this one to do some vector trimming so that we can get these letters to overlap and do it cleanly. So with the vector trimming, I can draw like through where I need to go. If you've seen other live streams where I'm doing these, you know I use this often because it's a great way to get crisp lines and connections. So I'm gonna undo that. I think I want this to like taper a little bit at the bottom so it has a little bit more energy. And then we can go like that. The reason I like doing this as opposed to just like doing the letter curve like this is because like I don't know, you can't get like a perfect clean edge unless you like try really hard, but this you can do quickly. So now when I double tap the modifier, I just come in here and get rid of what I don't want. And then we've got like nice tight angles. And like, for example, these S's are going to overlap but I can just draw them full without having to go back in and like erase because I can just tap what I don't need. Uh, I'm going to redo that S because I don't want that. I don't want those to touch there because then you get like a weird tangent. So go like that, like that. I'm going to get a sip of water. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Thomas Heffer, you said, can I use your alias? Of course. Let me favorite that so I don't forget. I pronounced your name correctly. Cool. Uh, I'm so glad. So many butcher. I, I know the struggle with that. My name gets mispronounced a lot. Um... Maze, you said, are you still using the paper like 2.1? So I actually do have it on my iPad right now. However, I just put it back on. Um, and I put a new one on because, you know, when you order, uh, or if you don't know, when you order um, a paper like, and most other iPad screen protectors, you usually get two in a package. And the one I had previously been using was the paper feel, I think, and it got pretty worn out and I needed to replace it. And I found the paper like box and decided I would try that one again. And I don't know, it's, I'm still a little undecided about the new paper like. I think if you're someone who really wants to make sure the screen quality is not hindered by a screen protector, this is the best one for that um, because it's the most clear. But for me, it doesn't have enough. I, I like a little bit more texture, a little bit more paper feel, if you will. Um, than this provides. I also find that it gets, for me, it could be the way that I draw, but it gets pretty scratched up pretty quickly. So I've only been using this since last weekend and it's pretty scratched up. All right, I'm gonna come in here and trim some of this stuff off so it looks a little less chaotic. So I want the R to overlap so I can cross out that part of the eye. So this is when this kind of thing is super helpful. And I think, I think I might want the S to just go behind that eye. And then up here, uh, actually no, let's do the opposite of that. Let's send the S to the back and then 
That one can overlap there. I don't know if I'm convinced about doing this connection with the R and the K, but I do want to give it a shot because, I don't know, it's just very satisfying for me when things connect like that. <laughs> I think if I do decide to go with it, I'm going to um, put it like a separation in there, but just having them line up I think will be fun. Um, Buj Didi Eddie, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. I did not forget you. I know you're at the top of the list, um, but I have to prioritize the uh, super chats. So um, the super chats that are ten dollars and up bump to the head of the line. It's just you know fair, but. Uh, once I get through those two, I will go back to the normal list. Um, I know it's, I guess, a little bit of a bummer, but you know, I gotta, gotta make a, a living here. <laughs> yeah. But we still got plenty of time, so. I wouldn't worry, your name will still get drawn. I did not forget you. I can't decide if this G is doing what I want. It may need to be redone, but I gotta, I'm actually gonna pretend this line end there because I think that'll look better <laughs> and then we can I'm gonna need to see it in full to decide if it's okay I think it might be okay hey junkie kid thanks for joining it's nice to see you here Junkie Kid is an amazing illustrator. If you aren't familiar, check out his work. It is super rad. Um, Trevor, you said, can you tell me about your doodles? You seem to have a style, humor, look, and colors. What's your inspiration? Um, thank you so much. I think um, my style has sort of evolved from like a little bit of like a, a natural way that I draw, but a lot of that is just like, you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s with like those weird cartoons. And then also being into like um, punk rock and stuff and some like hip hop stuff. And like all of that stuff just sort of culminating into I don't know, like my own recipe, maybe. Um, I think one of the biggest factors that I contribute, that I, um, is that the word? A, oh, a attribute to developing my style was a daily drawing project that I did for many, many years. But I think that the best way to sort of, um, or the only like real natural way to develop your style is to just do lots and lots of work. Um, and I think drawing challenges like that are especially good for it because you, um, you kind of like draw, I don't know, you like get out of your comfort zone. Cause like, you know, sometimes you don't want to draw, but you're like, Oh, I did this challenge. I got to keep up with it. Um, at least for me, like I take things very seriously. So it was a good way for me to, sort of develop that style because like when you're making something and you're like you know maybe not feeling well you're exhausted and you're just like forced through it your sort of unique voice will 
shine through, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but I think it's really just about lots of drawing and like, that's how you figure it out. I think if you just like try to make stuff, trying to make a style, it won't be, it won't come through as authentic. So I don't know, that's just, I don't know if that was helpful. Okay, so this is kind of fun, but I think it needs like a little bit of like a 3D situation. So what I'm gonna do is just, um, I'm gonna do it on a separate layer just in case, but I'm just gonna make like, uh, lines like pulling it down into the center. So it's kind of like jumping out a little bit. And I like loosely base this on, I don't want to say reality, but like how it would actually go in. But then I also will cheat a little bit and like just sort of make it end the way I want it to. Um, for example, like obviously that ends a little bit shorter than the R, but I'm just connecting these to keep it clean. And then I'll come in here and just get rid of the stuff that I don't want. Um, Trevor, you said you seem to have a skateboard art style. I, yeah, I mean, I can see that. Like, um, you know, uh, that was obviously that kind of culture was always a big inspiration, influence. Goes along with like the 90s punk rock aesthetic. I feel like there's a lot of overlap there. Okay. So I feel good about that. So I'm just gonna merge these together now and then just fill it in. Uh, cool, all right. So let's, I always like to turn on the other ones when I put them back into the, the ones that we've done so far. Okay, cool. All right, so um, what is this there? Oh, that's a sketch. We can delete that. And then I think I have one more super chat before I go back to the list. Um, Polo King, how are you clipping always the overlap? Overlap to clip? Okay, so that is the feature in Fresco called vector trimming. So real quick, when you're drawing with it, with the vector brushes, you can have lines crossing like this and then you've got your modifier button so if you double tap that you'll see the blue is on the outer edge then you can just cross out what you don't want it's one of the best features in the world okay see who uh jessica thanks um i would love to draw your name but I do think that it might be tough to get all the way down there. I, there is the option to cut the line with um, the super chats, but I feel weird telling people to do that. Um, but uh, the next one I'm doing is the super chat from Thomas Pepper, who asked me to do his alias which is, I make a new layer and write this out so I don't misspell it. Wolf Gar, I like it. Bloodbane, okay. I already, I already know the vibes we're going with. Blood Bane. I spell this right, Wolf Gar Bloodbane. Okay, I'm hyped. So let's move this up over here and let's just get into it. So I'm gonna do some like, 
I don't know. Some of this like bold. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> Sharp angle, kind of textured situation like this. Oh, maybe we should do some. I can't decide if I want to keep it like this for all of it, or if I want it to be like the the blood bane could be bloodyish. I don't know. We'll see. Let's let's see how they line up in terms of spacing. So this is why it's helpful to. Uh, draw them on separate layers because if you uh, realize that you didn't account for the spacing you can go in and uh, fix that so maybe we could do some like drippy bloodbane letters like that I think that is enough for me to work from Oops, okay. I'm gonna turn down the op opacity. What are we doing here? Oh, I had the grid turned on, okay. And make a new layer. And I'm going to go back to the classic anchor that I like, but I'm going to turn the smoothing all the way down so that I can get some gritty lines. Let me go back to the comments. <laughs> Glad to hear that you are excited, Thomas. Okay, so. Basically, I am just leaning into my overly caffeinated shaky hands and then giving it a little more wiggle as I go to get like a good kind of, I don't know, texture situation like this. I find that there are brushes that naturally have that kind of shake, but they never look quite like I want them. And I find they look too um, repetitive and like not like a natural texture. So I tend to like to just do it myself, but using a a inking brush like this Retro Supply Co. Classic Inker, I think combining my own line shake with that grit gives me what I want it to look like. So I'm just gonna fill these in to like just confirm that it's doing what I want. Thanks for the super chat, Jessica. You are definitely going to get bumped up. Let's see, what are we doing? So um, normally in the past I had been doing these for an hour, but I think I'm gonna go a little bit longer today. Um, there's been more super chats than usual. So I wanna make sure that I can do some of the other uh, names that were here early too. So I'm going to stay a little longer for this. This actually, um, doing this with the super chats actually makes it more uh, sustainable for me to like do these longer on a regular basis too. Cause, um, you know, usually I have to like get back to work, but 
if they're doing some sort of income generation as well. It makes it a lot easier to keep doing these and not going back to the stuff that, you know, pays the bills, if you will. Um, so I liked that connection with the A and the R, but I didn't want that to be the only connection. So I went in and like made the U touch the L. I generally just want to make sure that I'm not doing like something on just in like one spot of a of a word because then it makes it like a weird focal point. Um, and again, I'm double tapping to use my brush as an eraser so I can trim the thickness of that A just a little bit, um, just so it's a little bit easier to read. And now I'm going to work on this Bloodbane lettering. Uh, Trevor, yes, sometimes coffee can be an asset to a certain look, like this Wolfgar lettering. Um, all right, so I think I'm going to shift this over. I need to be aware that the B, A, and E lettering is getting a little tight, so I need to make sure that I'm building some room as I do this. Uh, so I'm going to put this moving way back up to 100 because I'm going to do this as like some drippy letters for the blood bane. So sometimes, well, normally I would find it helpful to like work out the letter forms before I go into the drippiness, but because I'm trying to go relatively quickly here, I'm gonna see if I can just wing it. Don't recommend this if you're trying to do this type of lettering, but I have a lot of experience in doing some drippy letters and lettering in general. So I feel confident that I can get the job done. <laughs> Another tip when you're doing drippy letters is to try to vary the size of the, the drips. So for example, sometimes you have a little drip, but sometimes you've got a long drip, like those ones at the bottom. I would say figuring out the overall shape first is definitely helpful, it is a little bit easier, but um, you know, we're doing what we can here. I also like to try to follow the shape of the other letters, like the way they curve, like matching that a little bit, makes them kind of flow together pretty well. And making them sort of drip into each other, I think, is a, a nice thing. Like this O. And I think I'm going to make these two O's connect to sort of save some space. So I'm going to have the, this be the other O over here. Since we're going to need some extra space in the uh, at the end. And then maybe put it like a drip there to emphasize that connection a little bit. I also try to not draw with my canvas angled when I'm doing these. Um, you may have noticed that I usually draw things on an angle, but the reason I don't do it when I'm doing drippy letters is because I want to make sure that the drips are all going down. So if you start like zoomed in like this, drawing and then you like make it a drippy and then you straighten it out you're like well that drippy is going sideways nobody wants a sideways drippy uh, thank you rena um i would love to draw your name however i'm not sure that there's going to be time since i do this 
first come first serve um, where I start at the top except for when there's super chats um, so like people who do like ten dollar and up super chats can jump the list a little bit um, but this is the fourth time I've done one of these so I will be doing them more often so hopefully I can draw your name soon um, okay this is coming together though I am realizing that I didn't do much to shave space so I think I might be able to just shift this over a tiny bit and have it still work can't go too far because I'm using the negative space so they go together as like a little lockup but I think that that may have helped um, Maybe we can make some, well, I guess we can expand, extend a little bit further. I think it's going to be okay. We'll figure it out. <laughs> We're in this together. Uh, I like the droops humor in the comments. I really like doing um, drippy letters. So thanks for inspiring me to do that with your semi-ridiculous name. Okay, I think we made some space here without it being too crammed, I think. We'll have to see. Yeah, I think that's okay. As long as we don't cram everything. I think if you are doing something like this and you're trying to make space, it's obvious if like everything at the end looks tighter, but if we just make the B and the A tight and then do normal spacing for the rest, like the N and the E, it will not look like we ran out of space and had to cram it in there. I think what I want to do here is maybe erase a little bit in here and add a little bit more of a little drippy. And let's delete the sketch so we can see this a little bit better. Okay, I think this is good. Let's just add in a few extra little dribble dribbles trying to make them different. You don't want to go overboard, you just want to spread it consistently throughout. I think we just need a little bit in the O's, and I think we are in a good place. Oh, over here. <laughs> Sorry, keep finding spots where it needs a little balance. Uh, I think we did it. Uh, cool. Let's, um, I'm trying to do things with my mouse, which is not connected. Okay. Merge down. Let's, uh, move this into the collection. Okay. And 
I am going to, I'm going to do Bouge Didi Eddie and then the other super chat from Jessica. And I think those might be the last two. I, we will have to see how we're doing. Oh, it's only 12.05. We might be okay. Um, let's put these into a group. Okay, uh, pencil. Let's write this down. B O U J D D I A. Okay. Daddy Stores, you're working on lettering for me right now? <sighs> That's awesome. Uh, thanks, Jimmy D. Rock. Glad you like it, Thomas. Okay. I want to do something very different now. Um, maybe some, like, chonky letters. There's lots of round shapes here. And this the J's. Hmm. Tricky thing is we got a U and a J right next to each other, so you want to make sure that they it doesn't read like uh, two U's or two J's. I think what we can do is have the J overlap on top, and then it'll read clearly. So B O U J and then the D's are also uh, a little bit tricky when you're doing this style because you want to make sure it doesn't read like an O. So I try to really emphasize that hard edge and then in the center the cutout. Make sure that is um, it has like a little bit of a hard edge to emphasize that. Okay. Let's see what we can do with uh, Eddie. I want them to connect and make like a shape um, hmm. see if we can bring the D I want the D far enough over that it like well that negative space in the uh, the L works so that there's no gap I don't know if that makes any sense but it does to me so <laughs> I apologize for that I'm just like finessing the shapes here. Um, okay, I think we can work with this. Uh, let me just double check spelling. Yes, okay, cool. Let's merge that down. I think this might be another one that will benefit from um, the vector trimming where we've got these overlaps. So bring down the opacity, grab the vector brush, and let's just uh, dive in. Especially when I'm using the vector brushes or doing smooth curved shapes, I, I do like the smoothing turned all the way up. And I bring that up because I had a comment on one of my videos um, yesterday where they were saying that there was so much lag while drawing in Fresco based on my video. Um, and I had to clarify that it's not actual lag, it's just the smoothing. So the way the smoothing works is it cleans up your, your lines and angles as you're drawing. So 
it ends up looking like there's a little bit of a delay, but it's just the way the smoothing works. If that's not something that you can deal with, and or you don't need it to be, you know, smoothing for you, if you've just got the steadiest hands in the world, you just don't have to use the smoothing, and then there's no lag whatsoever. It has it has nothing to do um, with actual lag because. Um, Fresco is actually very uh, well built in terms of efficiency. For example, I also have an iPad mini that I use when I'm, to like take with me places when I'm, when I'm like traveling or if I just wanna, if I'm just going somewhere and I wanna have my iPad with me, I don't wanna carry my big iPad Pro, uh, I'll use the mini and the mini is very um, bare bones processor wise. Uh, it's just the, the cheapest iPad you can get, least powerful, and it has no problem, um, I messed up that line, handling anything in Fresco. Uh, for example, I just wanted to see how much it could take, and I have this like illustration that has motion in it, and there's like 20 different motion layers in the file, and it has no problem running it on the iPad mini, which is pretty crazy because that's basically a glorified uh, iPhone. It doesn't have, you know, the new Apple silicone or anything like that. It's just, uh, just a little baby. And it handles Fresco like a champ. I didn't even acknowledge before that I would redrew that same curve like 10 times because it just wasn't happening. Uh, but I guess that's the, the beauty of working this way. You can just undo things as many times as you want. It can lead to um, maybe doing things a little too perfectly and taking any of that kind of natural imperfection out of it, and which sometimes I want. But if I'm doing something with vector trimming, I'm trying to get really tight things, then, uh, you know, I want it to be perfect. Uh, Thomas, no worries. Glad you were here. Glad I got to draw your name. Glad you liked it. Uh, Uh, Fian Phoenix, I don't know if I'm saying that right. You were saying, what does my waiting list look like right now? So um, I jumped back to the normal list to do um, this one, but then another um, super chat came in. So that one gets done after this, and then... Um, I'll see how much time I have after that. Um, typically I only go an hour, but because there was a good turnout today and more super chats than usual, um, I'm, I'm staying on longer to do that. So um, I, will, uh, I will check after this is what I'm getting at. Oh, glad my pronunciation uh, was correct. So the chat is being cleaned. What does that mean? Like it's like the stuff that is older is getting erased. I didn't know that happened. I'm trying to figure out this D because it's a bit bigger. Yeah, Trevor, there will definitely be more of these. Um, these are these are a lot of fun. I like doing them, so 
uh, I will definitely try to make it sooner than later. I think I'm going to have to give up my dream of having that the D fill in the negative space here. So I think it's just going to make it look awkward and I don't want to do that. So we are going to come up with a different solution and just have a, a decent amount of negative space there. And then I pull that in like that. And then let's pull that up so I can use the vector trimming. Let's turn that off. So I think I want that one to overlap. I'm trying to like maybe mix what's in front and what's in back a little bit. And I think we can just get rid of that little thing. And this got weird. I think that y needs to overlap even though we didn't make the lines for it we can just come back in and do that okay Uh, cool. I think that's just want to finish that line. And then there was this little spot that I need to erase because it's um, with my lines overlapping and not something that I could vector trim because it wasn't two lines. Uh, yeah, I think that looks cool. I like that. Okay. Let's uh, put that into the folder. What? Go in there. Go in your home. Okay. Let's uh, delete that. And delete that. And then uh, Daddy Sora said, you sent the lettering for me on Instagram. I am looking forward to checking it out. Okay. So Jessica, you said... Um, you've learned so much from my videos. Thank you so much. Can you draw my business name? Um, be just different. Okay. Be just different. How you spell different? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the first I and Diddy needs closed. What did I do? All right, we got a lot going on here. Let's turn off these other ones. The first I and Diddy. You mean at the bottom? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess it does look a little weird. I was thinking it would be hidden by the D, but you're right. It does look a little awkward. Uh, I appreciate that. Let's let's see what we can do here. Um, I didn't want there to be like a weird gap, but I think maybe if we do something like that, that might be a good compromise. Maybe. Yeah, that's a little better. Oh, 
Mr. Petit, thank you so much. Thanks for joining. All right, let's uh, be just different. So I think for this one, I may use like shapes to sketch it out. So I'm thinking like if we do different on like a angle going up like this. So sometimes I'll make a frame situation and then like block in my letters in that frame. to get that like tapered shape. And then I can like figure out the spacing after it. And that's not how you spell it, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> um, the best way to do this is to not um, try to stylize your letters first. It's to just like um, write it out in block letters like this. And then you don't make stupid spelling mistakes because you're not thinking about the design. So if we go that, okay, and that's actually how you spell it. Um, and now we can use that as like a, a guide, but um, before we do that, I'm going to move on to the rest of the words, because again, I wanna think about the whole composition first. So I like this idea of tucking the B in the, uh, that area. Um, and I want to emphasize like the just thing because I feel like that's uh, but maybe it all needs to be on an angle. I don't know. This is the uh, the struggle. So I'm thinking about using that alignment. Maybe it should come in like that to just give it some motion and then we can have like a the B in that spot. So this chaos <laughs> is probably not helpful to see, but it is how I plan things out. So now I'm gonna kind of try to redraw this using these angles that I just made up to give it like an overall shape. And then maybe I don't know. I don't I don't like how it's working. Sometimes you got to go back to the drawing board. It happens sometimes. Let's see. What is how does different look in a script situation? So sometimes I like to um, just writing it out in script and to like see where like the negative spaces are. So we've got this like big open area above the E-R-E-N-T and like maybe that's something that we could do with like using it for the, the just lettering to sort of pop out of or something. Generally, I keep this to people's names because what we're dealing with here is because it is a business name, I'm like taking into account what it means and like emphasizing things and it makes it a little trickier than just lettering someone's name um, because there's other things to take into account in terms of like emphasizing and expressing things. So you did a little bit of, uh, a little bit of cheating, Miss and Jessica. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't put rules up, so it's not your fault. I think we can work with this. So let's, um, uh, no worries about nitpicking, Trevor. That was helpful. I, your feedback was important. Sometimes um, 
when I'm doing these things quickly, I don't notice things like that. Uh, glad you appreciate the chaos, Jessica. Um, that's, uh, I think it's just a natural part of doing this kind of thing. All right, I'm gonna bump up a little size, a little bit more smoothing. I'm not gonna go into my line work yet because I need to figure this. I need to make sure I have like the overall design locked in because this is a trickier one. So I think I'll have the S come down into that space. Um, I think it needs to overlap a little bit. So that should come out further, so that reads. Okay. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Jessica. Okay. All right, I think we're in a good place. So, I know it doesn't, it might not look like it is. I think I can work from this. So I'm gonna make a new layer. Uh, I'm also gonna use vector for this um, because we've got a lot of stuff overlapping. But I think I'm going to bump up the brush size a bit. And I'm going to start with the script because it influences the placement of the other letters and words. I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I like to pull that little end piece through the F so that it doesn't look anything like a lowercase b. It's just like a tiny little detail that I think makes a pretty decent difference in terms of readability when you're working with a script. Because there's some like subtle variation between some letters. That line weight is pretty good. I'm going to go a tiny bit thinner for the just lettering because it's going to be an outline. And I'm loosely following the same angles of the other letters so that it kind of flows together a little bit. Again, I'm drawing through the shapes to do um, to get the cleanest lines because I'll just trim it afterwards. Okay, so the one that I was worried about was the U, just making sure that it didn't get the U and the S, I don't want them to cut off too much of each other, but I think that'll be okay. Let's see. And then let's 
draw this shape for the B. And I'll do that. All right, let's trim some of this chaos. Uh, maybe switch your chat to all messages from top messages. It's the slider icon beside the scissor icon. Um, unfortunately, because I'm streaming from Ecamm and not uh, using the YouTube app so that I can do the screen sharing and stuff like that, I don't have that option. I wonder if I can set it ahead of time because all I have is all comments here, unfortunately. I didn't draw the rest of the S, and I think it needs to overlap. But those lines are not going to line up, so we have to redo the bottom line. OK, so let's. OK, that works. Okay, that's enough of the letter. Um, now I want to do this outside thing. Oh, you were talking to the person who can't see it. Um, uh, thank you so much, Aaliyah, for your comment. I just put it in the in the video. Okay, so I'm just making like a. I don't know, a little shape around these letters to just sort of tie it all together. Sometimes I think making like a little container type situation makes it feel a little bit more cohesive. I guess, I don't know, I just like doing it. Um, okay, and now we need to do the B lettering, which I wonder if I, I can't decide if I want to like make that. No, I don't, I don't know. I'm not ready to do that yet. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to follow the shape of this like triangle. The other cool thing about the vector trimming is like, you know, sometimes you get a weird end of your letter shape. Like I just did uh, there where I got that lump. And, but since we're gonna just cut the whole thing off, it doesn't really matter. I have to raise that middle part up. So now I can just go like that, 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 and trim off what we don't want. Then you get nice tight edges. Um, I want to do the same thing here, but I didn't draw through. So I'm going to draw an extra line there to do that. Same here. And I also am going to make the rest of this letter shape. Fill that in. Okay.
yeah, I think that's um, I think that's fun. I like that. Let's merge that together. Uh, hopefully you like that, Jessica. Uh, uh, uh. Evan, any updates on the time of tips? I just went on that video. Is the quality the same? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Timo tips, the um, pencil tips. Uh, yes, uh, I'm actually using them right now. I do think that the colored ones are softer and wear out faster because I had a mixed color set that I used and it um, it seemed to wear out some of like the other one, like I, I had a, a red one and it wore out really fast. So this next, this most recent time I ordered the, um, uh, the white ones and it's holding up well. So I think, I think there's a chance the Apple ones maybe last a little bit longer, but you know, it's really debatable. I can't really say because there's so many variations. I, for my own personal use, I think I will stick with the, the Timo ones because they're so cheap and easy to get from Apple. I would just say order the white ones. Um, okay. Cool, Trevor, you like them as well. Let me, uh, let's see, it's 12.37. I think, I think I probably have to call it. I think I can't do any more, unfortunately. We did a bunch though. Um, I need to go in and get some client work done. But thank you all um, for tuning in. And again, I will do more of these very soon, um, very, very soon, maybe, maybe even next week. So if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one, make sure that you're subscribed with the notifications turned on because I will share um, a community post ahead of time, letting you know when I'm going to be going live. And you'll also get the notification about the scheduled live stream. That way you can be here for that. So stay tuned. They'll also be my regular um, live stream on Friday, though I usually do something else instead of the, the lettering, the name lettering that day. So there's that. Um, yeah, so I, I think there was, oh, there's one more that I f didn't include here. So this is uh, the full, the full set. The Gavin one is getting cut off. But yeah, uh, lots of variety here. Always fun. Um, thank you all. If I missed any comments or questions, I apologize for that. Um, hopefully I didn't, let me just make sure before I end this stream that I didn't miss any super chats um, since obviously I wanna make sure that I'm drawing those which it looks like I did. Okay, all right, good talk. Come hang out on Friday. It's already scheduled, so you can put a reminder turned on. Thanks again to my channel members. Um, that's also another way to get your name drawn. The super supporter and above members I'll get their name drawn and included in all the videos that I make while they're members. So there's always that option. All right. Good talk. Bye. Thank you.